just have a very quick recap on the last lecture. So last lecture, we end with uh, this theorem, uh, Foster criterion. So this is uh, uh, a criterion on positive recurrence. So we state that if we can find a function, a Neapolitan function f that satisfy these two conditions, then we can show that uh, the Markov chain Xn is uh, positively recurrent. So we want to apply this on an explicit example. So let's look at this example on a quadrant plane. So let uh, psi n, n greater than zero be a Markov chain on sigma. So this sigma is a subset of uh, R plus square. So it's a quadrant plane like this with increments theta n, so theta n is just the increments of, of this uh, Markov chain. So because it's in two dimensions, so we write that uh, psi n in, in uh, psi n one and psi n two, and we define the stopping time tau to be the minimum of uh, psi n one psi n times psi n two equals to zero. Okay, so this set, this stopping time is actually the hitting time of uh, sigma zero. The, the boundary here. So sigma zero is the blue line here. So the process will run around, okay, and at some point it will hit this, uh, this boundary or this boundary, and that is the stopping time that we are looking for. So we want to see if this stopping time is finite or infinite, okay, depending on the setting of how this walk moves. So we need to impose some condition on how, how this moves. So first of all, we have um, Suppose that expectation of this theta n is zero. So essentially there's no drift for this, for this uh, walk or for this chain. And we have the expectation of the norm square is less than or equal to b. So again, this is just a bounded jump condition. So you can't fly away instantly. And we also have this uh, interaction term to, to denote the uh, covariance. So if we have the expectation of uh, the change in the in the uh, for first coordinates times the change on the second coordinate. Okay, the expectation of this is rho, so it can be positive or negative here. Okay, so this is a setup. The question is, um, when will this process be recurrent or transient? And 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 when will this uh, expectation of tau exist? If this is finite or infinite? If it's finite, then what, what is the expectation? Okay, so let's do a quick calculation first. So if we look at this expectation, okay, so what we're trying to do here is we want to apply the Forster criterion. So we need to think of what the F should be. So in here, a good choice of f is just uh, psi n1 times psi n2. Okay, that is why we want to look at this expectation. So this expectation can be expressed as this is the covariance plus um, this term and this term. So from our setting, we have this zero, this two last term zero, and this term rho. So at the end, we get this expectation equals to rho. So if we want to apply the theorem, we want this row to be strictly negative, okay? So if, if it's neg negative, then we may just apply theorem nine, okay? With with this uh, to, to be x, and then we can just deduce that the expectation of tau is finite here because it's positively recurrent, okay? So the interesting thing is, after we know that this expectation is finite, we can actually compute exactly what this expectation of tau. Okay, so let's see how we do it. So, okay, suppose that expectation of tau is uh, fi finite, so it means that we are in the region that rho is uh, negative. So for k equals to one, two, then this sigma n tau, uh, n wedge tau, so we look at each coordinate uh, separately. So for each coordinate, psi n tau, uh, wedge tau is a non negative martingale converged to this uh, psi tau k, okay, when it takes uh, n goes to infinity. So the associated quadratic variation process will satisfy this condition. So this quadratic variation 
which is just nothing by the expectation of the uh, the the change square. Okay, that's the quadratic variation. It's less than or equals to b the the constant bound times this uh, number here. There's a minimum of n and tau. Okay, so the martingale here, the martingales uh, psi n wedge tau each coordinate, they are uniformly bounded in L2, so it converges in L2. Okay, so if we multiply them together, this converged in L1, okay? And so we, we can get the limit of this expectation, okay? By, by our option stopping, it's just the expectation of, of this, okay? Which is zero from our setup, okay? So, Moreover, if you look at this quantity, so if you add this uh, term here, minus rho times this, this is also a martingale, okay? We can easily check this. So if we, if we apply the same fact that we have, we have just used, then we have the expectation of this one minus this. So we just expect, take the expectation here, okay? It's just exactly this quantity. Okay, with, with the starting point size zero one times size zero two. Okay, so now we need to take n goes to infinity to get rid of this uh, wedge thing so that we, we get uh, psi tau at the end. That's what we want to have. So we get expectation of tau is just the limit of this, which is just this quantity by changing, by, by putting the, the row on the other side by using monotone convergence, okay? And this is only correct when, when rho is uh, negative because we assume that this is finite, okay? So essentially we get explicitly what this is, okay? Because these, these are all the numbers that we know from the, from the setup, okay? And we know this is the expectation of, of the stopping time, okay? So in fact, we can show even further that a similar argument can show that this expectation of tau less than infinity when rho is less than zero is sharp. So if we have the other side, if rho is greater than or equal to zero, then in fact, we have uh, the uh, infinite expectation on tau. So how to do this is actually um, by contradiction. So suppose that we have, in this case, if rho is greater than or equal to zero, we suppose that we have finite uh, hitting time uh, expectation that is finite. Then now this time, um, this quantity again is a sub martingale and the conversion L1 as above. So we actually have this quantity expectation of, of this is just zero. And because it's a sub martingale, so the sign here reverse, we have this expectation, but this is greater than zero from the, from the setup. So this is a contradiction because we get zero greater than zero. So that means that this is not happening. And that is why we have uh, uh, infinite expectation here. So all the results here are, are, are sharp. Okay, good. So th this is essentially the end of uh, this positive recurrent, recurrence criterion session. So the next topic that we'll move on is a, a long example on random walks on half street. So you see a long example to see how we can use these um, criterions in a completely different model, okay? Which is, which is interesting uh, by itself. So, <clears throat> so the picture is, is something looks like this that um, I'll explain bit by bit, where does these things come from? So let's start with um, so, so this is called a non-homogeneous random walk on a semi-infinite strip or half strip because we, we usually have an ending point here. It doesn't need to be zero here, okay? It, it can start uh, anywhere from, from any, any point and each line can have a different state space, okay? So we will explain it here. So let S be a finite non-empty set. So essentially S is the vertical component to, to denote how many lines that we have here. Okay, so let sigma be a subset of this Alpers cross S that is locally finite. Okay, so what it means is if we intersect sigma with uh, this bounded region, this cutted region from zero to R, then the, the number of, of points here is finite. 
okay, for, for any R. So for example, you can always bear in mind that we can just simply take sigma to be Z plus cross S, okay? But the theory here applies to, to a more general model, but the classical thing that we, we should think of is, is this state space, okay, sigma and Z plus cross S. So we define for each line, K in S, the line lambda K to be this thing. So what does it mean is if we fix each K, say, say K is one, then this lambda k store all the information that uh, where this x can be on this line, okay? So, so say it can be on one, two, three, four, but say not five and six and so on. So, so you store all the, all the points that it can go to uh, for, the, for the process. And it can be different for each line, okay? It's not necessarily the same, but if you keep this example here, then all of them are just uh, set plus, okay? So suppose that for each, k in S, the, this uh, lambda k is unbound, so it has some, some chance to go to the internal side, so that is possible to be transient. And we define the projection of sigma to be to be lambda, okay? So, so if we have all the points in on, on each line, we project everything onto one line, then that is, that, that set is lambda. Okay, so now after we, talk about the state space, we want to put a process on this state space. So this process, we call this uh, xn eta n because it's a two dimension thing. So xn is the horizontal uh, coordinate and eta n specify which line is in, okay? So n in z plus is a time homogeneous irreducible Markov chain on sigma, okay? And a, a locally finite subset of R plus cross S, okay, this sigma. So neither coordinate is assumed to be Markov, okay? So it's a genuinely um, a, a complicated more process. You, you can't just look at one uh, coordinate and apply, apply some, some uh, uh, Markov chain theory here. So, so they are kind of interacting with each other. Right, so there's some uh, applications of this model. So why this model is, is useful? So it, it actually have quite a few real applications uh, in various places. So we can feel S, the, the vertical component here, is, as a set of internal states, which influence the mo motion on the lines R plus. So for example, we can have, uh, in OR, we can have modulate cues. Okay, so S is the state of surface. So say in state one, it move in a certain way, in state two, and move in a certain way, but then the states move uh, interact each other. So someone in stage one can go to stage two and, and reverse going back and so on, okay? So in economics, there's a process called regime street chain uh, process. So you can switch from uh, one regime to another regime, say say a country to another country. So the S component here store the market information, okay? And in physics, we have the physical process with internal degree of freedom. So S here would be the energy or momentum states of a particle. And X is how the, how the particle move in a certain state. Okay. So here is the classification of the walk. So we want to think about recurrence and transient in this uh, model, but uh, the, the usual definition doesn't follow immediately in this setting because now we have the X and eta n process while eta n is somehow finite and, and bounded because it is only the number of lines here. Okay, so you cannot go to infinity in this direction. You can only go to infinity in the, in the uh, horizontal direction. So we, we have a lemma here. So let Xn to be a time homogeneous irreducible Markov chain on this state space. So exactly one of the following holes. So we still have the dichotomy here. So if Xn eta n is recurrent, then what it, it means, it means that the probability of Xn equals to X infinitely often is one, okay? So you see this condition is only on Xn, okay? It is not on, on the second coordinate eta n, okay? For any X, okay? And th this, is, this is the projection of, of the, of, of the, of the uh, state, state space sigma. Okay, so, so X got to be in this state space so that it is attainable. Okay, so if Xn eta n is transient, then 
is the opposite, the probability of xn equals to x infinitely often is zero. Okay, so, so you can see it is either one or zero. Okay, it can't be anything uh, in between. And this is essentially why this is a lemma. Okay, because this is not a trivial fact. Okay, this is not trivial that this is the dichotomy. So in the former case, we can just uh, simply call xn is recurrent. And in the later case, we, we just call xn is transient. We just drop the eta n part here. Okay. So as I said, the process xn is not a Markov chain. So this is somehow different from our usual definition. This is a lemma, but not a definition because it's not trivial that the dichotomy of recurrence and transient holds. So the, the probability must be zero or one rather than other values. Okay. So, I mean, the, the proof depending on some, some uh, Markov chain theory. So um, if, if you know a bit on, on the Markov chain theory, then um, you, you can somehow believe me in, in, in this presentation that this is, this is true. This is still a dichotomy. Okay. So um, we have the same thing uh, for positive recurrence. So let Xn to be the, the same process again, then there exists a unique measure nil. Okay, so, so then this nil is just very similar to the definition of the positive recurrence that we just gave before. And uh, exactly one of the following holes. So if it is now, so what it means is if it is recurrent, but not positive, uh, it, if it's not positive recurrence, okay, if it's not positive recurrent, then we call the process now, okay, then we have this new is actually zero for all x. If it's positive recurrence, then we have the usual thing that this new x is actually positive, strictly positive for all x in, in, this, in the set lambda, and also it sums up to one, okay, so it's the usual stationary distribution that, that we have, okay, and when x is recurrent, then we call the first case now recurrent and the second case uh, positive recurrent. Okay, so now recurrent means that it is recurrent but not positive recurrent. While now will means that it is just not positive recurrent. So it can be now recurrent or transient. Okay, so this is again a lemma because it's not trivial that the case that it can only be either new equals to x for some, so, so we, we, we don't see why it's not possible that the case that it can happen for new x equals to x for some x or new x greater than zero for some other x, okay? So in fact, this cannot be happened and, and, and we can prove that. That's why it's a lemma, okay? And, and this is a dichotomy here. So, so again, the, the proof relies on some careful separation of the two coordinates of the state space. Okay, so this is this is a setup for the model. You can believe me that uh, essentially the the recurrence and and transient uh, property with with some careful treatment, it is it is still preserving. Okay, so we need some assumptions on this model. Okay, to to see when the model will be recurrent and when the model will be transient. Okay, so these assumptions is kind of uh, uh, mild. But, but very important. So first of all, we need a moments uh, bounded on, on jump of Xn. So we, we need bounded jumps here. So this is essentially the, 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 the jump for each step. And if you take it to the power P and take the expectation given a starting point, then this is less than a constant C, okay? De depending on, on P. So most of the time, in this presentation, we will only need p equals to one. So we only need the uh, expectation of the first moment or the expectation of drift is finite, okay? It's, it's less, than a, less than a constant, okay? So we just denote this first moment, okay? Or, or we call this the drift or expected displacement to be mu i x, okay? There is an i here because each, this i stands for which line the process is. And for each line, it can have a different drift, okay? And, and this is a very important quantity that will classify the process will be recurrent or transient or not. Okay, 
So the next assumption we want to define is about the, the other direction on the eta n. So we define qij to be the probability that it will jump from this point to this line, to, to the jth line, okay? So this is qijx, okay? Starting from the point I, xi, jumping to the line Q, uh, j. So we want this eta n somehow to be close to being Markov when xn is large so that we can somehow um, have, a, have a sensible way to, to describe the model when, when, when x is large, what will happen with the model? We want it to be somehow kind of stationary. So we have qij equals to this limit uh, qij x um, and it exists for all ij and this QRJ is irreducible. So this is a very sensible assumption because if you if you don't have this, then you don't have the stationary distribution on S. So, so you, you can't say anything about the process in that case. So we let this pi to be the unique stationary distribution on S corresponding to this uh, QRJ matrix. Okay, so <clears throat> Last but not least, we want to state the simplest case of this model. So this is called a constant type uh, drift condition. So remember, we have the mu i that we just stated before. Okay, so that is just the expected um, uh, drift. So suppose that uh, this expected drift is a constant, okay, di, and we actually allow some uh, perturbation here, we, we allow a, a small error term here. So it's not exactly need to be, the whole thing doesn't need to be exactly uh, a constant, but this constant is dominating the, the, the whole thing here. So it's di plus a little one, okay? So this di again, it can be different for, for each line and it can be positive or negative, okay? So some line can, can be positive, some line can be kind of negative drift. So let's look at some pictures. <clears throat> So, so this is one example that on each line, okay, it is just a constant drift here. Okay, they are all the same and they are all positive with the same degree. Okay, so, so in this case, one can easily predict that this is definitely transient, okay, because in each line there's a push on the right. Okay, so, so it is unlikely that you can keep on coming back. So this case is essentially transient. So in the other case, if it's this pushing back, okay, every, all the drift are negative. Remember there is a boundary on the left. So this, this one will, will kind of keep on pushing back to, to that boundary. So this one will be clearly recurrent. The interesting thing is, okay, so because we allow di to be anything, it can be positive or negative. So sometimes it can be uh, go to the left, sometimes go to the right. So in this case, it's not clear what will happen, right? Because sometimes you get pushed on the, to the right, sometimes you get pushed to the, to the left. And more, moreover, it can be on different sides. So di can be different. So some, some of the push can be bigger, some of the push can be smaller. Okay, so what will happen in this case? So in fact, we have a recurrence classification for this case. And the key quantity here is the sum of di pi i. Okay, so what does it do? This di stands for the drift of each line and pi i essentially stands for the amount of time or proportion of time that we will spend on each line. And to sum this up, this is kind of the average drift of the whole system, okay? So the theorem say, if this average drift is greater than zero, then it would be transient. If it's less than zero, then it would be positively recurrent, okay? And this is a theorem from uh, Giorgio and Wade in 2014, which extends slightly on the early work of uh, Malyshev, 1972, Fallin, 1988, and Ferroli et al, 1995. Okay, so you see there's a rich history of, of, this, of this problem here. The critical case um, equals to zero. So essentially you have uh, no drift, no total drift for the, for the, for the system, zero drift on, on the system. Then this is, this is, Tortuous and grilling, but also intriguing case in the sense that it is, it is very complicated. Okay, very, very, very complicated. We will, we will go back to it uh, later at the end. Okay, but the main thing that I want to show you is this uh, theorem 12. Okay, we want to prove this theorem. Okay, this is the easiest, uh, easiest part. Okay, because it's 
it is uh, not exactly at the, at the critical place yet, okay? But it is already a very good result because most of the time, actually you will use this theorem because this, most of the time you will get, uh, get, get some drift in the system unless you are considering a very critical system that have no drift in total, okay? So let's see how this works. So again, the same idea, we want to find the Nyapunov function. So this is a very good example because the, in some sense, we don't want to formulate the Nyapunov function in a very explicit way, but we want to form it with some kind of constant and we try to decide what those constant will be later. Okay, so this constant drift case is actually based on various Nyapunov functions. So again, because there's a, a positive recurrent side and the transient side, for different side, you need different uh, Nyapunov function. So we just go for the easy side, okay? So we will go for the positive recurrent side, okay? Just take G to be this function, a very simple function, X plus BI for some BI in R. So currently I haven't said what BI is, okay? And, and this is essentially a key quantity, how to, how to understand this, okay? Although the formula is very similar here, X plus BI, but to find this BI, there is a, uh, there's some, some technicality here, how to, how to get this. Okay, so before going on, again, we want to calculate uh, the, the increment moment estimate for the Apple function. So again, we, we want to calculate this. This is the quantity that we want to have, uh, want to use in the theorem, remember this expectation. So we show that this is equals to this quantity. Okay, so this is just a very simple calculation here. So by the condition, uh, constant drift condition, so this is the condition saying that uh, mu i is equals to di plus o i, uh, o, little o one. So essentially we have this just by definition. Then we just plug in everything because uh, this is x plus b i. Okay, so so uh, by plugging i equals to either one, we get that it be either one here. So just separate the expectation and then just plug it in, we get this. Okay, very simple, okay. So in here, we just apply this uh, Q infinity uh, condition here to, to, to get this, to get this sum, okay? Because we are summing over all the, all the possible numbers. Say the same as the thing that we, we have here, we just rearrange it. So we have the result, okay, simple enough. So the next ingredient we need is the, what we call the fret home alternative. So the following well-known algebraic result will actually enable us to create the, to construct the correct Nyapunov function, okay, that, that we need. And it's not actually not for this case, it is for most of the case that we will discuss here. Okay, so, so this fret home alternative, alternative is actually a very important observation to solve this problem. So given an S cross S matrix A and a column factor B, then this equation a a equals to b has a solution a if and only if any column factor y for which a transpose y equals to zero satisfy y transpose b equals to zero. Well, so this is just some some algebraic result. So the important bit is how can we transform this algebraic result into our setting? Okay, and this is the the transformed result. Okay, uh, and and this is the this this is this is an important observation to 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 make the whole argument work okay so let's di is in is in real and qij to be an irreducible stochastic mark uh, stochastic matrix with stationary distribution pi okay so this is essentially well defined this qij then the following statement are equivalent this is what we say about the uh, Quantity here, summation uh, dij, uh, di pi i, okay? Okay, if this is zero, then then the following condition hold, okay? So it's, they, they are equivalent. So this condition is there exists a solution A, okay, which is a factor that is unique up to translation to the system of equations for, for this, okay? So in some sense, we somehow transform this condition from this quantity to, to uh, existence of a, of a certain solution in a, in, a, in a system of equation and vice versa, so we can go back, okay? So why this is useful? So 
a modification of the above argument use the following statement with inequalities instead of equality. So what I mean by that is this is an equality. Yes. So if we change this to greater than or equal to, then we can also change it to greater than or equal, uh, greater than or equal to. Or if we change it to greater than, strictly greater than, then we also get strictly greater here. Okay. And and this give us uh, a lot of help on how to transform the 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 problem to 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 that uh, algebraic side. Okay. So we can show that under appropriate conditions involving pi i and suitable b i actually exist to construct this uh, correct Neapolitan function. Okay, and this is this is very important because when we set up the Neapolitan function, how do we know that there is actually such b i that satisfy all the conditions that we want? And this flat home alternative gives the existence of this b i. Okay, so here's the lemma that is, that is combining the important observation there and the and the fat home alternative that I just said. So Hugo, can you yeah. show us lemma fifteen, please? Lemma fifteen is this one. So this is this is this is just a observation to to interpret this uh, sigma, a uh, summation of uh, di pi i equals to zero to to this uh, system of equation. I mean this this thing kind of require a proof and it is not immediate to see. Uh, why this is true in some sense. Right, thank you. Thank so, you. but but the important part is, is this thing. So is if we have some UI in R, then if we have this condition, then we have, we again, we can change this to the existence of BI for, for this uh, system of equation and the, and the reverse side. Okay, so we will just try to prove uh, part, one part because the other part is very similar, just, just reverse all the sign. So we suppose that the sum of this ui pi i is minus epsilon for some epsilon. Then we can just take epsilon i is, is this quantity. So we just uh, divide by the corresponding uh, pi i. So we immediately get this thing, okay? Because we, we can just uh, replace this uh, we can just just sum up all the all the sigma i okay that that would give back the sigma so we get this so we want to apply an application of of, of 15 so 15 is just this lemma with the equality here so after we applied it uh, with di equals to ui plus epsilon i okay then we can immediately get this okay so it's just a just a very simple argument to play with this uh, di ui and 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 epsilon i to make this work. Okay. So now we're ready to prove the theorem. So this is the um, theorem that uh, we, we we talk about. So is is this theorem is uh, when is this key quantity total drift is greater than zero, then it's transient. Total drift is less than zero is positive recurrent. So we are going to prove this side. We are going to prove the positive recurrent side. Okay, so as promised, we use the Neapolitan function G with the suitable choice BI, and we will see what the suitable choice here is. So first of all, we see that this condition is satisfied. This is what we need for for um, for positive recurrence. So the, by the Foster criterion, which is the positive uh, recurrence criterion, show that the process is possibly recurrent if we also have the other condition satisfied. So this is the, remember this is the other condition, the, the expectation that we need to be less than, uh, strictly less than minus epsilon for sufficiently large X. So now suppose that we have this condition. Okay, this is the, the, the condition that we have from, from, from our theorem. Then we use this lemma 16 I Okay, so this is the this is the fat home alternative uh, corollary. Okay, then with u i equals d i, we can show that in fact there exists such b i, and the b i is essentially the solution for this uh, equation, and it exists. Okay, from from the from the lemma that we have. Okay, so once we get this b i, then we this condition is satisfied. Okay, and this condition is satisfied. This condition is satisfied. So by, by, by the Foster 
and foster criterion, then this is uh, possibly recurrent. Okay, and we are done. Okay, so one might ask, so what about the other side for transient part? So it's very similar, but we need to use a different Neapolitan function. However, the Neapolitan function here is a bit more complicated. So instead of G, we have the H here, and uh, this is the function that we need to try. Okay, so, so it, is, it is a bit tricky to explain in a few words why this, this works. Um, so essentially one can try this one uh, first, but you, you see this is not enough and to, to, to do the work just by calculating the expectation, you will see that you can never get that condition. So you need some extra term to, 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 to help with you. And in some sense, it's something like a, a reverse solving process. So if you know that you want to get some certain condition, like you want the expectation to be less than or equal to zero, then you need to find a function to satisfy that. So you somehow reverse engineer that you, you might have some hint of what, what this should be. Okay, so in some sense, this bi is actually the same bi here, but we also have the complication of this x zero and we need to separate into two cases. Okay, that's why we, we don't want to go through this, but the, but the key idea is exactly the same. Okay, so, so I still have 20 minutes. Yes. Okay, so the most interesting thing is, so what happened if it is at the critical case, if the drift is zero, okay? So as I said, it's very complicated. So <clears throat> the case that we cover, if it is not zero, then we only have the constant drift. And if it is zero, then we consider the simplest situation first. First, So if this sum is zero, it's actually possible that all of the di is all zero. Okay, so this is the extra assumption. All of the di is just zero, then definitely the sum is, is zero, right? And what we do is that if this di is zero, then you see this disappear. So mu i is just uh, little o one. Okay, so we have to somehow quantify this uh, little o one. And we know from the analysis by Lamperti on a, on a, on a macro chain on, on, on a real line. Okay, so it's just a one line. We know the critical region is around CI over X here. Okay, that's why we mean make them. Uh, we make him to, to work on this um, uh, street process, but also with the same uh, Nyapanov type drift here. Okay, so we assume that mu i x is equal to ci divided by x plus, again, a smaller term lead to o x minus one here. Okay, and again, ci can be different here for, for each line. Um, and this time, we actually know that mu i, the first moment is not enough to, to make the cr classification here. We actually need something extra, which is the second moment. Okay, so sigma i is the expectation of this whole thing square. Uh, so, so this expectation, this is just the second moment. So in some sense, it, it gives you the expected, well, not expected, but it, it gives you a variance of the, of the process, okay? And we, we define, we, we, we suppose that this variance is just a constant SI squared plus, again, a small little O1 error term here. And this is essentially what we need to classify in this case. So one can actually go further. You say, well, di doesn't need to be zero for all i. So say some of them is not i, uh, not zero, okay, for some i, then we actually need a lot more. So first of all, this di does not disappear. So we have, again, we try to do this di, di thing. And then we also have sigma equals to ti here. So it's very similar to, 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 to this, except this. But this time for this case, only these two conditions is not enough to, to, to uh, classify the, the problem, okay? So we need a lot more here. We need, in fact, so you can see these kind of interactions in, in these things are only depending on mu i and sigma i. So in some sense, if you know the drift on each line, then you can just calculate the average, then, then you, can, you can understand the process. But in here, the interaction itself, the explicit interaction itself actually matters. So instead of mu i, you need to consider something like mu i j here, okay? And, and for the q condition, for the q i j, you, you need to consider one more term. So, so it's, 
is particularly complicated here. So let's let's focus on the second case first. Okay, with with the Lamperti drift. So it's already it looks quite bad uh, in the in the picture. So it looks like something like this. Okay, so because each line is 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 kind of changing according to to x because we assume that this drift is ci over x. So when when x is large, it, this kind of drift is going to be to be smaller and smaller. Okay, and and at the start it can be very crazy. It can be anything. Okay, and so it can. So, so it can it can look like something like this, and the results that we have here is again uh, from Jojo and Wei, two thousand and fourteen, suggests that actually we should look at these kind of quantity here. Okay, so we should have a comparison between the size of two ci and si square. Okay, so if if ci is very positive, okay, it is big enough uh, comparing to si square in in average. Okay, then it have strong enough push to push the process to the to the infinite side. So this is transient. If it's just somewhere in the middle, that so so essentially this drift is somehow on average close to zero. This CI comparing to the variance of the process, then it is now recurrent. And if it is very negative, if it is uh, very negative comparing to the SI square, so it overcome the 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 power of this uh, variance thing then it will be positively recurrent, it will always coming back. And in fact, if you assume a bit more, so you, you assume a bit some, say instead of the exact power, you assume uh, lambda power more on, on your conditions, then you actually yield an exhaustive classification here. So you see there's no equal sign here. So in fact, if you have this additional assumption, then if it's equal, then you actually get now recurrence too for the, for the critical, critical case here. Okay, so this, this is a very good result. So you might ask, well, how to prove this? So actually it's exactly the same. It's very similar, but this time we have an even more complicated Neapolitan function and the calculation is, is a lot more complicated because there's just a lot more technicality to, to deal with, but our, our approach still works. So, so the, the Foster criteria, the, the semi martingale method, the Neapolitan uh, function method still works, but we need to take this F here. Okay, this, this. So you see that the F is like more complicated than the last one. We, we have some strange thing, uh, new divided by two here. And we also have, have this uh, X to the power new minus two power. Okay, and then this X zero is this complicated. Okay, but, but it works. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. So this is the last case. This is the horrible, horrible case, the general, generalized Lamperty drift case. So in some sense, I did not define all the notations here. I just want to show you, uh, it can be very complicated, the situation, but our method still works. So you see, we have the lambda ij here, and then we have the dij here. So this kind of thing is, is the expectation of going, starting from one line, going to, so starting from one point, going to another line. So you see, the, depending on different di i and j, you have different dij here. So the exact interaction actually matters here. And also for the for the Q, we need to take one more extra term. So instead of just the QIJ, we need to assume that equals to QIJ plus this uh, lambda, uh, this gamma IJ divided by X. So we get one extra term. And this is the two uh, key quantity here to compare. And if we compare these two key quantity, we get the similar, um, um, classification here. And we also did the exhaustive case uh, under some uh, uh, extra epsilon uh, condition there. So we, we the, the, the classification here is actually exhaustive. So the interesting thing here is, is this quantity a, a, aj. And this aj is actually very interesting. It's essentially give you the correct quantity to shift each line so that in some sense, it can transform the process, this whole case, back to the second case, back to the Lamperty drift case. That, and um, that's that's we we that's we want. That that is easier to to deal with. And this a quantity is actually exactly the same as the one that we see in the fret home alternative. So you see, the fret home alternative is really really a key. Um, key ingredient to, to solve this problem. Okay, 
So there's an application on this. Uh, do I still have a bit of time? Yes. So there's actually an interesting application on just uh, this uh, random walk on a street model. Okay, so this is called a correlated random walk. Okay, and it, in general, it can be uh, as many steps as you want, but let's stick with the easiest case, the one step correlated random walk. So suppose a particle perform a random walk on set plus, okay, so, so this is only a half line thing. It, it is not on strip, it is on half line, but with a twist, so with a short term memory. Okay, so the distribution of this Xn depending on not only the current position Xn, but on, also on the direction of travel. So what I mean by that intuitively is if the process moves to the left in the last step, then it has more or less tendency to move to the, to the left in, in the next step. So depending on how, how it jumps. So formally, Xn, Xn minus Xn minus one, this whole thing is a Markov chain on set plus cross S. So you see, this is a half street model. So how we can modulate this is by assigning S with two equals to minus one and plus one. These are the two lines notation, which indicate that the last step is a left move or right move, okay? And if it's left move, then we move to this, this line, this state, okay? If it's a, a, a right move, then we move to this state, okay? So this is how we can transform this problem with, a, with, a, with this short-term memory with the street model. So you transform this one dimensional model with short term memory to the street model with a usual Markov chain. Okay. And to formally state that we have the probability of going from Xi to X plus JJ to be this uh, QIJ probability. And so we want to calculate the very various quantity that we are, we have in, in the uh, half street model. So this mu I X is, is again, the same definition and we can we can write it like this here. So it's QI from the right move line minus QI from the from the left move uh, uh, line. So the simplest model is that we can just have QIIX equals to Q. Uh, so so this is this is this is just a constant here. It's always equals to Q, which is greater than half for for x greater than or equal to one. Okay. So in this case, the walker have a tendency to continue in its direction of travel, okay? So say if, if uh, Q is uh, two thirds, so it means that for two thirds of the time, it will continue the same direction that it travel, and for one third of the time, it will travel in the opposite way, okay? So there's a positive correlation here. So more generally, so suppose this Q can, can be uh, anything between zero and one, then we can just set up the uh, QIJ, the, 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 the transitional probability, probabilities here. So, so this QIJ, if they are on the same line, so this is on the uh, same line, so it is either going from line one to line one, so it's moving on the same direction. Okay, this one means moving the same, same direction with a probability Q plus this, and to move to the opposite direction, we have one minus Q minus this, okay? So you see, we need two terms here instead of just Q and uh, we also need this CI term here. And this is, this is important because this exactly gives us the, the classification here by comparing the size of this C and Q, okay? So consider the, this random correlated random works uh, I said, then let's C equals to the average of this, uh, this C plus one and C minus one. Then if C is less than minus Q, then it's positive recurrence. If C is greater than Q, then it's transient. If C absolute C is in between, uh, if, if C is in between minus Q and Q, then the walk is not recurrent. So this apply the theorem that we have for the uh, Lampert drift case, okay? And this can be extend uh, in, in various number of steps. So if you have two steps, you will have four lines instead of two lines in the street model. If it's three steps, then you will have eight steps. And potentially you can all also extend to a correlated random walk in 2D, okay, and, and so on. Okay, you, you have 
you have more. So, so if it's in 2D, one step, then you have four. If you are in 2D, but two step, then you have 16 lines. Okay, so, so this is just a illustration of, of what is happening here. So if it moved on the same line, it have probability one third plus some, some uh, C divided by two X, some small term here. And if it goes to the other line, you have two third. Okay, and, and, and go back. So if, if, you, if you look at um, the, the classification here, you can actually see this one have a zero drift uh, case here. So, so depending on, on the, what, what this C is, it can be positive recurrent, it can be transient or not recurrent. Okay, and uh, I think this is the end of this part. I think I should stop here and uh, leave the audience for questions. Right, do we have any questions? Yes, go ahead, Plina. Yes. Hi, Shak. Thank you for the nice talk. I want to ask you something in relation to this correlated, uh, one-step correlated random walk. Yes. Maybe a very, I don't know if it's a very obvious question, but suppose you have the similar random walk, but now instead of looking at this one step, you look at, say, a window. Say you look back some function of n. So when you are at time n, you look back like fn. And you look back in Fn and then you choose something from there. So, so instead of looking at this one step, you look at some time, you go back some time Fn, some function, I don't know what is a good function. And then can we still generalize this kind of result? What do you think? So depending on the Fn itself, if Fn is somehow fin finite, if it's bounded, then it's possible. If it's mm -hmm. not, then we can't because if it is infinite, then then you have infinite lines here, and, mm -hmm. and in in a setting here, mm -hmm. we we only allow to have a finitely finite number of lines. But I mean, this model can be extended to a real actually half strip, so you can consider a model like uh, a region zero to one uh, times uh, R plus, and in okay. those model, I think that will fit. Into, into your setting. So it really depends on, on what F is. And if, if, if Fn is infinite, suppose Fn is like I look back say some log n steps or some square root log n steps or something like that, depending on what I want, then do you expect some kind of a phase transition depending on what Fn is for the recurrence and transients? So it, it does not directly apply to, to this model, as I said, because you, you will have F to be, to be infinite here. Mm -hmm. And so, so the, in some sense, the answer is not clear. We, we, we do not know if there is such a clear transition like this. Like this, like this, like this. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Can I ask a question, Hugo? Yes, go ahead. So at some point you presented uh, two variables, u and v, and you compared them. If it was bigger, if yes. u was bigger than v, u was, yes, there. So uh, two questions. Uh, do you have an interpretation for u and v, why you separated them and you're comparing them? Is this somewhat related to drift and variance? Yes, something like that. So. So as I said, you need to have the magical AI here, which is given by solving a system of linear equations. Mm -hmm. to get this magical number here. So what it does is you, you shift this magical number on each line. And, uh, it's an horizontal shift. That's yeah? right, that's right. So, so say if A is say A, A1 is minus five, then you shift the first line, five steps uh, with five units. So it, it completely messed up the, the, the model in some sense because it, it messed up with the safe space. So if you are thinking of a very nice 
phase space Z plus cross S, after this shift, mm -hmm. you will have a horrible, horrible uh, uh, thing here. That is why our model is actually not just for Z plus cross S, but for R plus cross S. Because this A doesn't need to be a, a, a whole number. It can be a very ugly number, okay? So once we have we have done this shift, then what it does it is is make the correct um, movement for each line so that the d the di on each line disappears. So if you consider the new system, then it will go back to the Lamperty drift case. And this is this u is the new uh, drift in the new system, and this is the new variant. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That is why we have the same classification so so when you revert back to this uh lamperty case yes you are your lyapunov function is somewhat uh, relatable to an embedded uh random walk like the expected drift you have to go from when you revisit again the same the same line can you reduce the problem to a single line that you did some excursion uh, and then you come back and you have some some drift is is this the way i should Look at this. Yes, yes. I mean, the, this is this is always the same idea. So, so the idea is you, no matter how complicated your model is, you try to find somehow a projection from the model to to uh, uh, the real line to, to the half real line R plus, so that you can apply the the uh, Foster gradient there, because that Foster gradient is is on 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 R plus. Right, but so there's an art in guessing these functions, right? Say again? There is an art in finding those functions, right? Yes, this is, uh, yes, I, this is, well, really, you, you have to work a lot on, on this Neapolitan function and have a sense of what kind of things you should try. It is, it is not necessarily, this is the first function that I come up with. Actually, we, we try a lot of functions, but it doesn't work. But at the end, we, we find a function that it works. So, so this thing actually is not unique, okay? The, the idea is you want to find the simplest function that you can handle, but do the job, okay? So, so, so um, say, so in the, in the first lecture, Remember, we have the um, condition here. Uh, we we prove the case for um, where is it? For um, two-dimensional random walk is recurrent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where is it? I think it's somewhere here. Yes, here. This one. So we take this function, okay? But if you look at one dimensional random walk. So if we want to prove frequency in one dimension, actually this function will also work, but it's overly complicated. In fact, we can take a much simpler function to make it work. So, so, right. so, so it, it, these functions are not unique. You, you, just, you just need to find the one that will fit into, will, will, will work essentially. And it's the simplest in terms of calculating. You want, don't want to use, always use a, a very complicated function Although most of the time it, it may work, but but it just overcomplicated the, the calculation. So it's, it is kind of an art of how to how to you how to choose the correct function here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. I will talk a bit more about about this uh, at the end of my third lecture. Just a small question: You show the complete classification in the Lamperty case. Yes. You had some hypothesis extra. But do you have a complete classification as well if you have more structure in the generalized Lamperty case? Yes, yes, yes. So you so let me go back. Yeah, so so you see I have an extra line that if we assume these two conditions, then we have an exhaustive classification. We have the exact same thing for the generalized Lamperty case. Right. I just because it's just this this thing is just overly complicated. So I just uh, cut off that part because right. of the size of the slides. So we, we have the same results here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hugo. Do we have more questions? So if not, 
uh, let's thank Hugo again for his exposition. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you at 2 p.m. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Conrado. Thank you, Hugo. I will stop the stream.